beautiful Sunday morning. Let's stand together and sing hymn number 348. 348, let's all stand together. My Savior's love so stands in the presence of Jesus. Let's stand together. 348. Sing the first, second, fourth, and last stage. All that first, sing with me. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
Lovely with us, hymn number 353, Victory in Jesus. We know this one well around here. 353, let's all stand together to sing. What an old, old story, let's sing together this morning. 353 on the first. I heard it all. Last week, I, I 
got to get all the money in for our upcoming Myrtle Beach Christmas trip. Those of you who will be going on December 1st to the 3rd, I need your monies this week for that, okay? If you have any questions regarding it, um, just let me know. Thank you. Good morning. Just one quick announcement. Uh, the month of October is our Pastor Appreciation Month. And uh, next Sunday evening after the service, we're going to meet upstairs, have a little finger food, cake, whatever, and uh, show appreciation to all of our pastors. Our pastor, David McNeil, our associate pastor, Carter Sloan, and our youth pastor, Kenny Scoggins. I couldn't think of three better men on this earth to have as pastors in New Hope Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Um, you ladies, get with uh, Marie McDaniel. She's sitting right over here. And uh, for the finger food and cake and all that kind of thing. And um, just some ideas on how you can show your appreciation for your pastors. Um, you can buy them a card, uh, write a nice note in it, and maybe put a little gift card, you know, to a favorite restaurant that they like to eat at, or, or put a little piece of money in there, or or just invite them over, put an invitation to invite them over to have lunch with them uh, at your home or, or dinner or anything like that. Uh, just some ideas um, come up with, you know, and, and um, just show appreciation for your pastor. I love all three of these men. I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. Amen. All right, just a couple of quick announcements for you. We do have choir practice tonight at here 5 p.m. We didn't have it last week, so we're going to be back tonight at 5 p.m. If you want to join us, come and sing. If you can't sing that well, that's okay. Come on anyways. We'd love to have you. And uh, join us for choir practice. Get ready for Christmas time here soon. And we're doing some different things this year. Uh, so hope you join us for that. Um, we had a great time last night. We had our Harvest Fest over at Camp Eagle with our young people and I played laser tag and had a bonfire and all those good things. And it was a great time and appreciate all those who came and part of that. And coming up um, this Wednesday night is our fall festival here at the church. And we do this with our daycare and our church together. And everyone's welcome to come to this. And we hope you'll be here for that. Uh, lots of things going on. I believe that uh, we're going to be dunking some of these people here. I believe the, the pastors will be dunked in the dunking booths. So right. We're going to sign up to done one of those pastors being Miss Christie's heading that all up and selling tickets for that mm. and uh, so if you want to know somebody you, you want to do that come up and be part of that a couple ways you can help us first of all you can bring candy if you've got a bag of candy and we need all that today uh, we can collect it up till Wednesday and there's a bucket back there for that you can sign up to have a, a trunk open for kids to walk around at 730 in your trunk and of course we're giving a prize away for the best decorated vehicle and uh, so if you want to be part of that you can sign up to Welcome Center for that and uh, we'll, we'll help you with that. And then number three, you can help us uh, a couple different little ways. And we'll be talking about that tonight right after church. We'll have a meeting this evening. And if you want to be part of that, we have hay rides and activities going on here on the, on the campus. So if you want to help be part of that, and we have our concession stand as well open. And Miss Marie and uh, we're working with that on us. We're having chili and hot dogs and soup and all that kind of good stuff. And so if you want to help any way in that part, uh, come tonight. We'll have a meeting about that, those, all those things and kind of finalize everything with that. Okay, and last thing to tell you this morning is we still are selling hoodies. Uh, they're $20, our new hope hoodies are for sale. You can sign up, we're doing a pre-order sale and with all kinds of colors and sizes and they'll be ready in a couple of weeks. If you want to see, do those, you can see me after church this morning. Welcome to school, okay? I feel like a conspiracy going on around this church. I have a Duncan booth that I know not of, amen. But if it's $100 a dunk, I'll do anything, amen. What a Mr. blessing. How's everybody this morning? Good morning. Right. You glad you're here to stay in jail? Say amen or something. Amen. I, I'm glad I'm in church. It's a beautiful day outside. We praise God for the beautiful weather. Uh, the wind kind of blowing all the leaves away. You can't enjoy much of it because they're blowing them, blowing them away. And uh, I think the leaves on my side of the mountain blow nowhere in Frank's house over yonder. Amen, Frank. But anyhow, it's blowing on the mountain. But uh, we better enjoy what we can and uh, enjoy this. It's a beautiful time of the year up here in these hills, and I love it. I love these hills, and it's beautiful up here. So we just praise God for it. If you're visiting today, we're glad you're here. And it's good to see Brother Lynn sitting over there today. Brother Lynn, God bless you, and uh, we appreciate him. I, I was running in a little late. We've been getting phone calls this morning of several people that have been, uh, been sick and uh, uh, hurting and different things like that. And... Uh, I remember Brother Charles. I got the message about Brother Charles. Help me there, Brother Charles. And we want to pray for uh, big Brother Charles. He uh, 
he's a dear blessing around here. And so he's, uh, they said, he's got the shingles. That one did, he's got the shingles. And so uh, we know how painful, if any of you had, my dad had that, we know all about it. So I'll be praying about that this morning. Also, Lisa, Lisa, are you here? Is she, did she come? She was helping her mother this morning, called right uh, for church. And uh, her mother had uh, uh, the cataract, am I saying that right? I think that's what I understood her saying, but she'd been sick from it, been a lot of throwing up and a lot of things. So pray for Lisa Hawkins' mother. And then Miss Janet. Miss Janet's been going through so much uh, pain and a lot of things, and, and we need to pray for these folks that need our prayers. Amen? And uh, if you were sick and needed some prayers, you'd want somebody praying for you. So let's pray that God will uh, take care of these precious folks today. Amen. All right, us as you come on this morning. And let's receive the offering, and uh, hopefully you'll come and enjoy the things this week. Please come Wednesday night, enjoy the good fellowship and the good time together. Bring that candy for those youngins. And uh, is each, uh, are you doing the trunk or treat? Uh, so each, do you have the people already signed up for that? All right, you sign up for your trunk or treat, and uh, you want to do a, a trunk, you know how to do it. We've done it a couple times here. And you can do that Wednesday night that your children, if you like to decorate, a lot of our, our mothers go all out and uh, put lights on it. I've seen all kinds of things in the, in the trunk and treat. But uh, let's, let's help these kids and let them have a great time uh, this Wednesday night. You come and enjoy the good food and fellowship, and we'll have a good time in the Lord and, and thank the good Lord for it. Okay, Brother Dennis, pray and thank the good Lord for the offering today. Let's bless this offering today. Yes,
folks did you enjoy playing? Amen. Amen. So good to be in church today and enjoy the beautiful day the Lord has given us. But I noticed that our boys and girls, our girls are getting more scarce and our boys are getting bigger. <laughs> 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 but, uh, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> We, get, we, we, we got the money for our missionaries, and that's what makes a difference. And I know we appreciate it. But it is good to be in church today. I trust that you've already had a good day and looking forward for the afternoon. That God might bless and encourage our hearts together. As Pastor David Lake mentioned, several of our folks are out sick, and Brother Vernon Mills and Vernon's out sick, and we need to. Pray for those and encourage those that are here that are not doing well. But, you know, a lot of times we pass folks, well, how you doing? I'm doing great. Well, that may not, may not be true. <laughs> but uh, stand with us if you would. Fellowship together a minute to do and then we'll continue on.
She's not back there. Did she sneak out? She didn't want to sing to her, did she? It's all right. We'll get her next time. All right. Let's sing to Michael this morning. Anybody else we miss before we go on? Anybody else? All right. Let's sing to him here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. said, I don't believe in. I believe once God saved you, you straighten up. Yeah. Clean up. <laughs> That's right. Do everything. I seen a preacher yesterday saying I was so ashamed of him. Oh. I'm going to tell you right now. He had, he come, I was working with my son in his house. Here he come out with a pair of shorts on and a pair of stockings on past his knees. <laughs> And I just shook my head. <laughs> and he goes into church. You see people going into church smoking cigarettes, throwing them out right at the door and everything. Oh, I don't believe in that. I believe in that. You may think it's foolish what I'm going to say. I'm not a One day I pray, Jesus, take my sins away, and that's when I was born again. 
crieth unto me from the ground the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to talk about Cain here just a little bit, all right? Our Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I'm shaking, Lord, just knowing what you want to say. I pray that you'll say it from the Word of God. Help me today to get out of the way. I claim the blood right now. I pray you'll help us today by the power of the Almighty God. The Lord, help someone today. Pass through here today. We'll thank you and give you glory and praise for what takes place here today. If there's one precious soul that needs Christ, save them today, I pray. Help Christians, Lord, to recognize, Lord, about the blood today. If they can still get cleansing and get purged from their sins. Lord, thank you for these truths today. Lead us and direct us, I pray. And we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. I want to say as we begin today that children, thank the Lord, are a blessing from God. Amen. I want to say uh, grandchildren are even a double blessing. Can I get an amen right there? Some of you grandparents. Amen. We had our grandbaby up there last night, and she touched every corner of the entire house, upstairs and downstairs. She is all over that place last night, and we was having a good old time, like Mike and Teresa back there, whenever they let go of her, we got her the rest of the time, amen? But it's a blessing. What we see here in Genesis chapter 4 is in verse 1 and 2, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have got a man from the Lord. So Eve has a child, and his name is Cain. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was the keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And here's a story you know of Cain and Abel as we see it here today. Eve gave birth to a baby boy named Cain. The word Cain in the word of God here, the word Cain means acquired, acquired of Jehovah, demonstrating that Eve knew that her son was from the Lord. She knew that the Lord had given her this precious boy. And now we see here as she looks again, she turns around and parts over with, she's conceived again, and this time Eve looks at Cain as a blessing, but as she looks at Abel, she's not so impressed. As we see the word Abel, the name of Abel, if you will, the Hebrew word Abel means emptiness. It means vanity. It means unsatisfactory. She was a little disappointed as we look towards this one here according to the Hebrew name as well. And we see here as we look that Genesis was a full of uh, people that were uh, full of frustrations and disappointments. And uh, the Cain was frustrated because of God's judgment in verses 14. And there's a whole lot of them that I could preach down through here. Maybe today you're frustrated. And there's a lot of things we see in frustration here as we look through the Bible and we see, I don't have time really to preach all of these, but she was for a word frustrated because of what we see in the child Abel. We see in verses 3 and 4 the first false religion that takes place. Well, you say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, let's read verse 3 and 4. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought and built uh, brought of the fruit of the ground the offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the first things of the flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and unto his offering. Y'all see that? And then we see, we see the two that now come to the Lord. You know this. This is the first offerings that were made to God. Cain brings the fruit of the ground and Abel offers the firstlings of the flock which would require the shedding of blood. Is that right? If you birthed me, if you brought the firstlings of the flock, probably a lamb or a sheep, you had to shed blood. And God 
accepted the blood sacrifice. Can I get an amen before we get started? And we see here the way of Cain. In fact, if you look at Jude 11, verse number 11 mentions uh, uh, being uh, involved worshiping God. He, he worshiped, Cain did worship God on his own terms. Uh, doing the work in his own hands and being selfish in his reasonings. Let me say something here to you real quickly. God is more concerned about our obedience toward him than he is our sacrifice. Say amen right there. What God's looking for is a bunch of people that would love him and learn how to obey him, especially in the way we worship him. Amen. And we see here that Cain's offering was, is the first of five offerings in the book of Genesis. Cain's offering was an offering of his dignity and his disobedience. That was the first offering. He was so proud of his crops and he was unwilling to offer a bloody sacrifice, seeing self instead of the Savior, if you will. Abel's offering was one of devotion and design. Praise God. Abel was devoted to the Lord. How about that? He loved the Lord there. His offering was a blueprint of generations to follow and what would God would require in the precious blood. We see Noah's offering was a celebration of deliverance and departure. I like this story here of Noah. He and his family, praise the Lord, were saved from the flood. And now they're starting out on a new life. Uh, and we see there the first offering from Noah. Uh, because God delivered him. Eight people came out of the, the, the ark there. Eight is the number of new beginning right here. And the first thing they do in starting out in their new beginning is they offered something to God. Are y'all with me on that? They made an offering to the Lord here because of the deliverance and the departure that they had. Well, if you've ever been delivered, praise God, you ought to have an offering for the Lord. There ought to be praise on your lips. And that new beginning that he started in you ought not to stop. Stop. It ought to start. And there ought to be praise and have something offered to him from now on for every generation. What I'm trying to say is y'all praise God every day of your life that he delivered you. Well, amen. I got two amens there anyhow. I'm glad, thank God, he delivered me. We see here Abraham's offering was an offering of dedication and destiny. Abraham was willing to offer his own son in obedience to God's command. And his obedience made him the father of a great nation here. We see all these offerings. Israel's offering before going to Egypt was an offering of dependence and direction here. He wanted to make sure uh, this was what God wanted him to do. Going to Egypt was not to be taken lightly here. And they made an offering uh, of dependence and direction uh, for for the Lord and to the Lord. And so we see all of these offerings here. I'm going somewhere, so hang with me. It's going to get better, I promise you, at the end uh, than it is the beginning because uh, we've got to talk about the murderer here. We've got to talk about the first murder here and why all this happened and what took place of it. But we're going to end in a better place. Amen? Cain's offering was rejected, but Abel's was accepted. God had respect on Abel and his offering. How about that? The word respect in the Hebrew, I like this, means to look at with interest uh, and, uh, and approval. You see, when he offered that offering and that blood sacrifice, are y'all listening to me this morning? It got God's attention. Hey, Amen. He looked on the situation. Hallelujah. I'm thankful I had an old rugged cross. It got God's attention when His precious Son was Amen. on the cross Amen. bleeding and dying for your sins and mine. Amen. Amen. Praise God, it showed interest. It means to be satisfactory. That's what the word carries, the word respect there. When God looks at our life, how about that? What does he see in our life? He, he, I mean, when, when, when we, does he feel that this way about our lives? Is it, does he, I mean, does he show approval when he looks our way? Think about your life right now. As God looking your way. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord go to and fro. Uh, beholding the evil and the good. What's he looking at when he looks at your way today? It, does he have respect on it? Does he look? Does he get God's attention about your life today? That ought to 
God to say something to you and me today. Amen. Amen. And we see here, we see here, uh, is he pleased with our service? Uh, is Jesus pleased with what we do? Well, we look at verse 5 and 6. We'll go right along here. We see here some first things in the word of God. We see uh, Cain's temper tantrum here in verse 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And the Bible says that Cain was very wroth. And his countenance, notice here, fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen right there? He was like a mad, wet chicken. Say amen right there. He was wroth. His countenance fell, the Bible says. I mean, we see here the word wroth here. Uh, he became angry. Uh, the Hebrew word uh, is cheroth uh, for the word wroth here. It means to burn, to glow with the blaze of anger. When you saw him, you knew his countenance was different and he was upset and he was really mad. It points to the fire of the heat of anger just after it has been ignited. Cain was filled with anger. He was filled with resentment. He was filled with bitterness and, and envy. I know none of you ever get that way, so I'll just talk about myself. Amen. I mean, we all get that way sometimes. He had what I call a real attitude problem and it needed a real attitude adjustment. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. amen. I've seen my children, even me growing up. Uh, when I needed an attitude adjustment, my daddy had the cure for it. Amen. About ten strikes on the backslide, uh, backside. Amen. Jumping over couches and over chairs and running through doors while he's whipping the, the tar out of me. Right. Mm. <laughs> he had that cure. Y'all remember that? Is that what you said? I remember it great. Yeah. Amen. I got the scars of proof, by the way. Hallelujah. Huh? What we see here, the temper tantrum, I mean, bad attitudes and a bad spirit and a bad way about it. I mean, bad attitudes gets us into all sorts of problems. And may I say they'll greatly affect your life as well. Yeah. 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 Amen. Listed are five examples of greatly affected lives that had attitudes. There was a wrong attitude we see here in our scriptures this morning of sacrifice. Cain was unwilling to offer the right sacrifice to God, and he got a bad attitude about it. There was a, a wrong attitude about service. Cain was apathetic towards his brother, and he got mad. And then we're going to see here in just a minute, kills him, if you will. He had a wrong, there was a wrong attitude in the book of Genesis, chapter 6 uh, and verse 5 uh, of, of man. Uh, man's attitude, the Bible said, was wicked continually. The thoughts and imaginations came before God. And, and everything that God saw in man in the book of Genesis uh, was wicked. Their attitude was sinful, if you will. We see a wrong attitude about security and safety there. Lot and his unconcerned and had an unconcerned attitude about his daughter's safety. Safety and security led him down there and around a bunch of sodomites down there. And he was unconcerned. Now y'all get what I'm saying here today? And it'll affect your life if you get in the wrong place with the wrong attitude in the wrong way. It'll affect your life. Amen. It affects all of us. We see the right attitude about submission. There was one. There was a man named Joseph in the book of Genesis. I might as well pick, preach the whole book of Genesis while I'm here. Amen. We might not get back to it. But Joseph had a right attitude. He had a submissive and a serving attitude in Potiphar's house. He had one in the prison house. He had one before uh, before Pharaoh. I mean, uh, Joseph was right in the night, and God gave him favor because he had a right attitude. Amen. Well, praise God. You see, when Cain was angry here, you could see it on his face. Let's park right there. It's real holy quiet in here this morning. I like it. It kind of scares me, but I like it. When you could see his face, you could see something about his face. God asked why his countenance had fallen. Huh? The Lord saw something on the face of Cain. His countenance had fallen. What we hold in our heart, are y'all listening to me this morning? What we hold in our heart will eventually service on our face. Amen. Now be careful about what you hold down in your heart. Amen. Cain's countenance failed. It was a fallen countenance. And we see a furious countenance. Jacob noticed a bad change in Laban's countenance 
in chapter 31 and verse number 2. There's all kinds of countenance changes in the book of Genesis as we look for it. May we pray today and may we preach and may we practice today the joy of the Lord to shine on our face. That when we see the Lord and when we see Him and when people see us, we say like the psalmist said, may thy face to make make thy face to shine upon thy servant. I hope when people see you and me, we're not gotten a bad attitude and I, I hope it doesn't show on our face. What shows right here reflects right here. Yes, preacher. Amen. God help us to have a wonderful countenance and a smiley face. Amen. I kid. I like to laugh and I like to joke and I, I just I, I I got that kind of bubbly spirit about me. Uh, but if I was to if I was to tell you the situations in life and the problems that I hear of every day and people going through this and that. You say, why is the preacher all the time happy and crazy and bubbly and everything? I do that because I want my face to shine. I don't want to carry a bunch of garbage right. down here and a bunch of bitterness down here and a bunch of problems down here. Yeah, There's a whole lot yes. more to smile about today. There's a whole lot more to shine about today. There's a God that still lives in heaven yeah, and he's still shining on us today. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to tell you that don't let the mully grubs mully grub you. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Let's read verse number seven. I gotta hurry up and get to the message. I ain't even got there yet. Great. He said, if thou doest well, <clears throat> if thou doest well, verse number seven. Thou uh, shalt thou not be accepted. If thou doest not well. If thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, thou shalt rule over him. And so the Lord comes here and he talks about, here came here and he talks about like a crouching beast, sin is ready to spring upon us. That's what he's saying. That's what the wording is talking about. This verse gives us the first occurrence of sin mentioned in the scriptures. Here's another first occurrence here. It talks about sin lying at the door. Are y'all getting that? Sin is described as lying at the door. The word lieth, are y'all getting it now? The Hebrew word lieth means to crouch on all fours like a wild beast ready to spring upon its prey. Amen. And the Lord is talking about this sin that's coming and it's a coming as a prey like a four-legged beast fixing to jump on somebody. That's exactly sin lying at the door. God knew that Cain was fixing to take his brother right here and the first murder was going to take place in the Bible and sin a lion at the door. You see that? And we see here if Cain would obey God and offer a correct sacrifice, God would have been accepted it. But no, no, no. The attitude of this man Cain went the opposite direction and you see the results of the attitude. Verse number 8. Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. You see that? He took his own brother's life. Yep. Killed him. I wonder what they were conversing about out there in the field before they killed him. I wonder if they were talking about the sacrifice of the blood that was being shed. God didn't accept my sacrifice. I now hear the fresh fruits of all the labor and the harvest of, of this magnificent big field of garden here. God didn't accept mine, but he took your blood sacrifice. Who do you think you are? Are you any better? You think you're special or something? That attitude, crouching up on this man, seeing lying at the door, all of a sudden, like a wild beast, it jumped on him with all four. And he murdered and killed his own brother. How about that? We see here, we see here a man that, that does this and took his own brother. And then God gets to pinpointing exactly where he was. Are y'all listening to me? You reap what you sow. Can I say it another way? You cannot hide your sin. Amen. You cannot hide sin. 
Amen. There's no way. Uh, the Bible says here uh, that in verse number 10, the Lord said, What hast thou done? The Lord speaking to him. He said, The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. God's looking down on the, from that and looking on the scene of these two brothers right here. And he's talking to old King there. And he says, hey, your brother's blood is crying up from the ground. I hear the cry of the blood coming from your brother out of the ground, the blood that's in the ground there. And we see the brother, and boy, and the Lord is saying here, hey, you can't hide. The word cry means to shriek or to proclaim. Cain could not hide his sin from God, and neither can you and me. Amen? We can't hide from God. He then lowers the boom and tells him the, the king's voice. Can you hear the voice of the brother's blood crying? The blood cries. I want to preach to you this morning on the blood still crying. I say the blood still crying. You see, this is the first verse in the Bible. Here's another first one that mentions blood. What we have here, it is used in reference to the blood of someone whose life was taken, who was murdered. Are y'all listening to me? Blood mentioned first time in the Bible talks about somebody's life who was taken, who was murdered. Blood is precious to God. Did y'all know that? Jesus, the Lord said the life of the, of the uh, life is in the blood. Amen. And we know that by reference there. Three other cries were found in the book of Genesis. Uh, the cry of sin. Sodom's sin came up to God and they were crying. And there's a shriek cry of sorrow. Esau cried from brokenness and deception. And here we have the cry of slain here. Abel's blood crying from the grave. Oh, a brother had been slain here. So can you hear that cry? I wonder what God is going to do. And he begins talking to him. Began showing him that you reap what you sow. That you can't hide from God. Anybody trying to hide anything from God today? Let's just plow down that road today. Nobody knows about it. Just you and God. Are y'all listening to me? You reap what you sow. God is sending out warnings in the book of Genesis right here. And i got to hurry up. God placed the mark on Cain. He put a mark on Cain as a warning to others not to harm Cain. I mean, I'm sure that after he killed his brother that everybody else wanted to probably take his life. And, 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 and we see here that, that, we see here that the, the warning was a sign of blood. Don't nobody touch him there. I mean, God is still giving out warnings today. Can I tell you? And they're warnings of love. He say, preacher, why do we preach on a burning hell? I'll tell you why. Because God is love. Are y'all hearing me? And there's a Savior that loves you today. And the reason that he loves you is he'll tell you, don't go to hell. Amen. He warns you about a burning hell. I'm trying to tell you today, if you're not here, if you're here today and you're not sure you're saved today, there's a warning going out in love and there's a God that will protect you because He loves you. Amen. 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 He tells him not to hurt Cain there. And so there's several warnings. Look over at verse 16 and 17 real quickly. And the Bible said we see the first civilization. I can't say that word. Civilization. I can't get it out. Verse 16 says, The king went out from the presence of the Lord, notice this, and dwelt in the land of N-O-D, Nod, that on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. She conceived and married Enoch. And he built a city called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. <coughs> A lot of significance going here. We see the first city. We see the first civilization there. Cain had been marked by God, told him nobody to touch him. He leaves uh, the presence of the Lord. The word presence, the Hebrew word present here means uh, the part of the face that turns. Uh, in other words, he leaves uh, the presence of the Lord. He leaves from the face of God. God turned his face. And he headed toward Nod. Are y'all listening to me? 
We see here the place called Nod. The word Nod means, he dwelt there in the word Nod. The word Nod means vagrancy. It means wandering all of his life, the rest of his life, because of his sin and the judgment of God. And now turning from the presence of God, he turned his face from God down the rest of his life. The judgment of God was on his life. And he spent his life wandering and, and a vagabond and, and a traveler. And he, and he never could stay there. He built a city, but he didn't stay there long. Amen. You say, preacher, what are you trying to say? That's what sin does in your life. It'll cause you to be a vagabond. Yes, sir, you'll be a traveler. I'm telling you, you'll be a wanderer, if you will. You'll never have your roots down and settle down. You know why? He shed innocent blood. He was a murderer. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Hang with me now. Hang with me here. We see here, we see here God's judgment on his life. Well, let me get to the good stuff here. Y'all can't handle much more of that hard preaching. I can see that right now. Preach all preach. Here he is wandering, make it long. You wonder if any good thing could come out of this. Brother, murdering his brother. Look at verse number 25 and 26 real quickly. Look at verse 25 and 26. Adam knew his wife again. She bare a son, called his name Seth. Did y'all see that? For God, said he, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. In other words, and then verse 26, And to Seth, to him there also there was born a son, called his name Enos, and began men to call upon the name of the Lord. I tell you right now, this is wonderful. Yep. One brother dies, he's murdered. And God says, I want Eve to have another child. And you know what? She had another child and called his name Seth. The Bible just says it right there. Seth was to be, catch now, the substitute for the brother that was just killed. I got goosebumps climbing on top of me. He was a substitute for the brother whose blood was shed. And saith here, oh, we see a revival taking place here in the book of Genesis by this brother. The word Seth means set time or appointed time. In other words, God had a set appointed time for a substitute. Can I tell you before I get my legs running, before I take off running, hallelujah, God had another set appointed time on a hill called Calvary. And there was another substitute. And his name is Jesus, hallelujah. And he came and substituted for you and me, praise God. And it was his blood that was shed for you and me. Amen. Well, glory to God. Don't get too happy right there, hallelujah. He just paid for all of your sins. That's, That's all we did. Amen. Well, glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. We see here the word call and the word Hebrew means to call out by name or proclaim. And what we see here, Seth, Seth married. And he had a son named Enoch. It was Enoch, which means mortal man or frailty. Are y'all getting this? The word Enoch means frailty. That means weak, if you will. Get the picture now. He just gave us Seth, the substitute. And his son that came from him was Enos, which means frail and frailty. And at the same time in the Bible here, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. You know why they were calling on the name of the Lord? Because all of us are weak and frail. And we need an upper, higher, bigger, more powerful strength. Amen. And that's the Lord today. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We see here a revival. A prayer in the book of Genesis through this substitute. Well, an animal was a substitute, sacrifice, and provision for coats of skin that God provided for Adam and Eve. Is that right? We see a sacrifice. A ram was caught 
in the thicket was a substitute for Isaac. Y'all know about that one. Judah offers himself as a substitute for Benjamin. In chapter 44 and verse 33. But I want to tell you today, I have a Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's our substitute for our sins. He died upon the cross. Isn't that wonderful today? Let's just go down that road back right quickly. Jesus was virgin born. Amen. Say amen right there. Amen. That means he had no sin nature. He was sinless. Right. I wish I could describe the embryos and the different things there I was reading on this week. I'm not a doctor, but I sure enjoyed the reading of it. Praise God. And Jesus, as he was born, didn't get blood from the father or blood from the mother, if that helped anybody. He got blood from that holy blood, the Holy Ghost. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Oh, my soul, my soul, my soul here. His blood was sinless blood. I want to say it was shed blood. I want to thank God in his saving blood as well. But here's what I'm trying to show you to this morning. It is also speaking blood. Say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, Cain's blood, the shed, shed Abel's blood, it, he died and fell from the ground. It's crying up from the ground. The scripture says that. But I have another substitute, the Lord Jesus. His wasn't crying from the ground. It's crying from glory today. Right. That's his blood. Jesus' blood. You say, Preacher, what are you talking about? Well, let's go back to the Old Testament real quick. They brought the animals on the Day of Atonement every year. On the Day of Atonement, they'd bring those animals. It might be an ox, a goat. I preached on them before. A lamb. Amen. They would take the blood of those animals. They'd kill those animals and shed that blood. Are y'all with me? And by the way, the priest would accept those animals. I preached that a few weeks ago. They take the blood of the animals there. And by the way, that priest would take that blood and we see him as a serving priest in the holy place. So y'all getting that? He's serving. He's shedding that blood. He's doing what he's a priest ought to do. That's what our Lord and Savior did. Amen. He went into the holy place and he was willing to sacrifice. He was willing to offer his own blood. He's our high priest. Amen. Right. But hey, he's the serving priest. But oh my goodness. Hey, man. When you get over here, the holy of the holies. Hey, hey, hey. He's a sacrificing priest. Amen. He's the one that was willing to go into the holy of holies. And on the day of atonement, he would pour out the blood of the sins of Israel and his own sins. He'd pour out and sprinkle out that blood. Are y'all getting that? That's a picture of what the Lord Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago on an old rugged cross. He died on an old rugged cross and shed his blood, and guess what he did? You heard him preach around here. You heard him preach the camp meeting. I'm preaching it again today. He took the blood back to the mercy seat. Amen. And may I say to you today, when you cry out, the high priest, our Lord and Savior, the substitute sits at the right hand of the Father. His name is Jesus. And when you pray and when you cry out to God, the blood cries out. Because the blood is still crying out from glory. And it's still covering sin today. Amen. 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 Well, y'all didn't get that too good. It's good for you. I'm trying to tell you the blood's still crying out. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I said the blood's still crying Amen. out today. Amen. The blood. Amen. The blood is still crying out today. Amen. Because we've got a Savior over there in Acts chapter 16. There's a big old fat Philippian guard over there. Amen. A big fat one. A big, big old Philippian jailer. And a big fat one. I mean a big one. Are y'all hearing me? A Philippian jailer. He was guarding Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. Are y'all listening? and tell me Paul and Silas were preaching the word of God and, hey, hey, and they got thrown in prisons they got in the inner prison and they were in stocks and the Bible says about midnight yeah. they started singing praises yeah. to God yeah. and started singing and I, 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 
just wondered what they was a singing. I just believe I know what they were singing. The Bible says a light a sprang in and an earthquake took place and it rocked the jailhouse. Jailhouse rocked. Hallelujah. And it wasn't Elvis a singing it. It was Paul and Silas singing it. Amen. Amen. Huh? A light sprang in. The Philippian jailer, the guard, was fixing to take his life. And Paul said, do thyself no harm. And, and Paul said, we're all here. Well, you know a long story short there. You know what happened. Hey, you want to know what happened? That old guard got saved. And Paul went down to the guard's house. And all the guards got saved. A mama guard got saved. And all the little children in the family, they all got saved. Yeah, Paul wiped his stripes on him and Paul got to discuss it and, and declare to it and that God wanted to know what was going on what happened to me and here's what it here's what it, you know what he said I believe he sang the song you reckon he sang the song I believe he sang the song when he realized it he says it's still the blood that saves from sin it's still the blood that cleanses within from the highest star in heaven to the depths of 